Hello folks. So in this video, I'm going to cover how neural networks can understand the text data or the data which has English words and sentences. We know that neural networks utilize numbers to understand the data or the input to the neural network is always being numeric form. Now, what if we have data in text form? Thus, it is very important to you know represent this text data in numeric form so that our deep neural networks get trained on this uh, textual data. We can easily build applications like sentiment analysis, chatbots, language translation, topic modeling, etc. If we know how to transform data in text form, uh, how to transform data from text to numeric form. Please watch this video till the end in order to understand this very, very important topic. Folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. And you can acquire these related skill set in order to advance your career in these fields. This channel takes on hands-on approach to build AI based products and applications. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release the videos about these hottest technologies of 21st century. So folks, I'm going to utilize the use case of sentiment analysis in conjunction with a recurrent neural network. Sentiment analysis use case comes into the text classification category. Here we classify reviews or feedback or sentences um, you know or any other written text into positive neutral and negative uh, sentiments sometimes we only you know uh, categorize into just positive and negative sentiments only now rnns are very useful or better choice when you are working with text data because if you think about it text is in a way sequential data as discussed in previous video so these are the sequences of words one after another and you will find that RNNs are very good at learning sequential data because RNN understand the time relationships in a better way. So let me now cite few real world examples where you, uh, we use uh, RNNs uh, you know, with text data. So number one in the list is type ahead or autocomplete where you can basically uh, you know um, where you uh, basically wants to predict the next word in the sequence. So we generally see this type of use case in search engines like Google. Um, I have already covered a separate video uh, covering this particular topic. So you can find the link in the i button above right there. So number two uh, in the list is uh, uh, number two application in the list is uh, language translation where it accepts an input sequence of words uh you know and let's say english uh, and uh, it translate uh, that uh, english sentence uh, into corresponding words in another language such as let us say hindi okay so rnns are very popular and extensively used for sentiment analysis and lang natural language processing let's say you have a very tricky sentence like this hot dog is very tasty yet I don't like it. RNNs, uh, you know, will be able to parse the exact sequence of words and figure out uh, that it is actually a negative review. It won't be able, uh, it won't be a positive review, even though we have the phrase very tasty in the sentence. So this review was in text form. Now, you know that a neural network train uh, weights and biases and they accept numeric data as input and here we have data in the text form, right? So we have text data at our disposal here. So how would you uh, use uh, text as an input into recurrent neural network? One way of uh, one of the way is to take bunch of characters or words and assign numbers to it. But it won't be a meaningful or you know very useful in that way. So what essentially we can do is to represent text as numbers in a meaningful manner where the numbers which represent a word has some semantic connection and relationship with other words. 
Now let's see how can we represent text as numbers meaningfully. In order to uh, get there, you first need to imagine the document as a word sentence. Okay, here D represents a document, and uh, the document is a uh, nothing but a tensor of word encodings. Okay, so let's go step by step. Okay, so the first step is text as sequential data. Here we can model a document as an ordered sequence of words. The document contains the words in a sent, uh, in a you know certain order, as you can see on the screen here, right? So this hot dog is very tasty, yet I don't like it, All right? Now the second step is document as word sequence, where the exact order in which the word appeared in this document is very meaningful. So when you split the document into words, you can then express this in some ordered form. What we are actually doing uh, here uh, when we, um, so what I'm saying here is, so what we are actually doing when we uh, split the document in Word is tokenizing our document in order to feed it into the recurrent neural network. Okay, here the word, this is very first word represented by let's say W0. And it can be encoded into some form that is x0. So w0 represents the actual word, and x0 is corresponding numeric encoding. And you can do this for every word in the document all the way through the n words that are actually present in this document. Now every word has text and corresponding numeric encoding of what? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. The third step is document as tensor, where once you have this numeric encoding, you can represent a document as a tensor. This tensor is nothing but a list of these encodings. Remember that every encoding has some numeric form since neural networks can deal with numbers only, right? Now there are several algorithms and methods which we can use in order to represent words in numeric form. These words in numeric form are typically called as text embeddings, which is a term I'm going uh, to use for uh, words in numeric form uh, in the remainder of the video. So we will study three methods in detail uh, there. The first method is one hot encoding, which I have already covered in one of the previous videos in detail. And, uh, and I suppose you are already familiar with it if you have um, you know, watch that video already. If not, then you can click on the I button link above, uh, you know, in order to get the more details. Second method is TF IDF, and here TF stands for term frequency and IDF stands for inverse document frequency. And the last and most popular method is, uh, and which is in fact is a commonly used method is in machine learning model, uh, is uh, word embedding. Okay, so this is commonly used in machine learning model built using neural networks. Okay, and I'm going to cover these three methods, uh, in fact, two, because uh, one hot encoding I've already covered in separate video. So two methods, TF, IDF, and um, the word embeddings I'm going to cover in next subsequent uh, videos. Okay, so folks, this is it for this video. To conclude, I explained how can we represent data in text form to numeric form so that uh, you know our deep neural networks can understand this text data so let me ask you a question from today's video we know that neural networks work with numbers only how can we represent this text data into numeric form please post your comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback and you can also ask your technical questions in the comment section given below I will be glad to answer your questions. And if you're watching this video and you're not already a subscriber, consider clicking on that uh, little subscribe button. And in case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.